All right, so I was showing you how you can kind of just cut out whole shapes out of your duotone shadow layer with your lasso, and this would be what's considered hard edge duotone or an animation shell sh cell shading. And if you ever dislike it and want to undo it, you can use your paintbrush or you can go to your flat color layer, select it all, whatever that shape is, right? And then just duplicate it. But to duplicate from your flat, you have to unlock it. So now that I've duplicated, I can just move that above and it undoes what I did, right? So there's, there's lots of methods. You can also just use levels individually on shapes to kind of find the right tone that you want. And then you can cut away just from that layer if you're having trouble with your kind of controlling your edges. Now, duotone can have multiple tones within it. It's not just two tones. So here we now have three just in this guy's skin, right? Like this one, this one, and this one. But they're all variations of the local flat color. I might take all of that and then just steal this tone and put that in. Remember, once you've got it colored, it's easy to just swap them out. Okay, let's play some more with Duotone. And I've got a lot of detail here, a lot of textures that could all benefit from, from some duotone highlights. But you can also do this in reverse. And you can make a duplicate of your flat colors that you brighten. And so I'll show you that. <clears throat> so now if I take my flat colors and I duplicate it, move it above my duotone shadows, right? And now I go to my image adjustments just, so, just like I did for shadows. And I take my levels and I push it to the left for image adjustments levels. And then I go to hue saturation and desaturate those highlights a little bit because as light is added, the intensity of color also decreases a little bit. It gets blasted out. This becomes highlights, duotone highlights. And then I can cut away from this to reveal the shadows or the flat color. So you have a lot of options. So where do I want shadows? Maybe underneath this. Now I'll usually just do that for kind of big sweeps. Maybe something like that, you know. So using adjustment levels can really help. And then you can just use opacity to kind of fade things in. Yet, right? So duotone. You can play with it lots of ways. That's all duotone hard edge. What happens when I take a hard edge layer, which is what I do after flat color, like this one, and then I go to filter and I say blur, Gaussian blur, which is the only filter I teach in the class. What that does is immediately turn my hard edge into a soft edge. Right. Like that. So let's look at now soft edge duotone. And sometimes while you're doing this, you'll notice that you messed up you got outside of your lines. 
And you just want to find the layer that that's on. And it's on this layer. So I unlock, and I'm just going to erase that from the color. That's why it's so important to keep your line art on the top. You'll also notice that, <clears throat> especially with this gray background, maybe there are things you never filled in that you can correct. So I'm going to take my magic wand, or not my magic wand, my paint bucket. I'm going to steal this. I'm going to drop it in. Whoops in the right places. Take my magic wand, select, select, select. It's easy to miss these little details. That's why flatting is so important. Drop that in, drop that in, and then on the other layers as well. Okay, so let's continue. Going back to the slides and the references, <clears throat> we talked about hard edge duotone. Soft edge duotone is just when you want it to be a more subtle blending of lights and shadows. Hard edge duotone is when you want it to be really crisp and more graphic, like an animation. But soft edge duotone can give you a lot of presence as well. And a nice way to fake soft edge duotone is like this. I'm going to turn off every layer except for my coloring layers. And then I'm going to hold down Option and say Layer Merge Visible. So now I have all of that on just one layer. Because the easiest way to do soft edge duotone, I like to do it on a, a gray background, is to use dodge and burn. Again, techniques we learned for compositing. So dodge and burn will darken or lighten the pixels that are already there. So let's say on the fur of my creature, that's where I want more soft edge. Where on the, the knight with his shiny armor, that's where... where Hard edge makes more sense. So I'm going to use dodge and burn. First I'll dodge. This will give me highlights in the midtones with a nice soft brush. Kind of like you see here with the Hulk. These soft transitions. And so I'll just build that where I want. Brighten, brighten, brighten. Maybe on the wings a little bit. Give it a little bit of soft edge. Maybe even on some of the armor tip of the sword. You know, just brighten it up. Just using dodge. Certain places. So you can definitely combine hard-edged and soft-edged duotone. Where it's a lot harder to do that is in animation, just because you need to replicate things so they simplify it without using soft-edge. But on illustration, on poster art, it's great to be able to play with these things. And because dodge and burn will only ever give you variations of the pixels that are already there, this is by definition duotone. It's giving you, with dodge, light versions of your flat color, and with burn, dark versions of your flat color. These nice gradations. So I'm using dodge, I can also use burn. And I keep it in midtones. So let's get some shadows now. Midtones, again, large soft brush. Decide where I want it to be a little bit darker. I'm just doing this fast just to show you. You get to make your own decisions for your your design. But it will always work with your existing pixels. I always start with cut with hard edge, which I sometimes call cut edge, because that's where you have to be a little bit more precise. But I can always go back to my duotone shadows. And I can cut new highlights out of that anytime I want.
Now I just need to delete them from my combo layer as well. Right. So it's all about giving you flexibility. If I want a little cut edge or hard edge highlight here, I can cut it out there and cut it out here. Thank you. Yeah, I think the thing I like best about digital illustration is that you can try out multiple solutions to something, right? When you're illustrating by hand, you kind of have to just commit to what you did, which is sometimes better for a deadline, but not always better for the artwork. So you can get some really nice results this way. Understand the difference between hard edge and soft edged. And it can be incredibly subtle, like here. That's hard edged, but around it is soft edged. That's hard edged, but around it is soft edged. And you, of course, can be really, really uh, perfectionist about it, but that's not going to be helpful. All right, I want to show you some other things now that go beyond duotone. I'm having too much fun. You know, on and on. I think I overdid it a little bit with the pause. Okay, so dodging and burning. And then you can always push it both ways. You can burn it and then dodge it if you want to brighten it up. And the more you learn about drawing, the more you learn about cast shadows, form shadows the more you'll make better decisions about when coloring should be hard-edged and when it should be soft-edged. I can also just lasso something and then just burn it. I'm dodging. Uh, and that is a way of getting hard-edged duotone in a soft-edged layer. So lassoing can help. So for instance, if I want a hard edge shadow under the nose right there, I just lasso it and then I burn it. And then I get, I get it. If I want it right here, a hard edge shadow. For the brow, I just lasso it and then I burn it. On and on and on. Great techniques. For the ear, maybe the shadow underneath the ear. I lasso it and then I burn it. And that gives me harder edged. So a lot of illustrations are a mix of both, soft edged and hard edged duotone. Now the next step, and I hinted at this before, or showed this last time, but the next step is called full spectrum. And this is more limited. You only really use full spectrum when you have thin line art. But full spectrum means you can use any colors you want. There's kind of no limit to your coloring. So instead of just doing variations on your, on your local color, like we've been doing with Duotone, you get to do, yeah, really just anything you want. This is the last place I need some, some duotone here. And then I shouldn't even try to, to finish this off, right? I'm just trying to demonstrate techniques to you. But it's so fun. <laughs> 